Hello and welcome. This is how to master the tone slash RGB curve in under 15 minutes. In this video, I'll be going through reading histograms using the tone curve and some basic color theory. You can find timestamps in the description to skip around between sections if you'd like. Oh yeah, the histogram. It's in the top right corner of your Lightroom. On the bottom of the graph, the colors and tones are represented, and on the left side, the number of pixels of those colors and tones are represented. Reading the graph from left to right, it starts with the blacks, goes into the shadows, the midtones, highlights, and finally the whites. Reading the histogram for this image, you can see a lot of blue and yellow in the shadows. Okay, so please download the DNG to this image. It's in the description. It's a Google Drive link. Double click it to open it up automatically in Lightroom. Now for the basic exposure adjustments, I'm just going to fast forward through those. There are a lot of tutorials already, but if you'd like me to make my own, leave a comment and I'll definitely get to it. I want to talk about a couple important things you need to do to your image before you go into the RGB curves. So check at the top that your camera has certain color profiles that you can actually import. So with the Fuji, there are Provia, Astia, Film Simulations that I think are great. You can get that by going into Browse and then go to Camera Matching. In here you're going to see all the film simulation presets or whatever presets that might come with your camera and you can just click the star in the top right corner to favorite it and always have that in your color profiles. Now everyone's going to have different profiles again so for me I'm just going to stick with the Fuji ones like I usually do and I'm going to go with Astia for this one. As long as you have the latest version of Lightroom you should be able to apply the Astia preset to the image from the description. So let's talk vibrance and saturation. Now you don't want to just drag your saturation up. Um, some people do that, but I prefer to actually bring my saturation down and bring my vibrance up. Increasing the vibrance is going to even out the saturation of all the colors in the scene, whereas saturation is just going to increase the saturation of what's already there. Now sometimes I don't bring down the saturation after increasing the vibrance, but in this image I'm going to bring it down because I think it's made it too saturated overall. So bringing down the saturation after that is going to neutralize that effect a little bit. For this I'm just going to leave my vibrance around 21 and my saturation around negative 17. I like the look that this gives. It's a little washed out and subtle, which I think matches nicely with the vintage Chevy. The last thing you need to do is adjust your white balance. White balance simply describes the tint of the whites in your image. So I'm just going to reset the white balance here to as shot. And as you can see in camera, it was really cool. So I want to bring out some more warmth to accentuate the yellows and the greens that are already there. Usually I'll try auto and auto for this photo looks pretty good. Hey, that's pretty good. Okay. So now let's get into the RGB curve itself. By default, you're going to have a very basic tone curve that doesn't actually allow you to add your own custom points. So click in the bottom right corner and you'll get the custom tone curve. By default, it's on RGB. Now you may notice in the faded background of the tone curve, there is a faded histogram that matches the histogram we were talking about earlier. Then you can see a faded 4x4 array grid in the background as well. This is a guideline for where you can place the blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. So starting with the blacks, I'm going to bring them up a little bit, I think. Um, I want it to be a little bit faded, but not too much. So bringing it up on the left side is going to add some gray, as you can see here. Bringing it down into the right is going to add more black. I'm not really going for a super high contrast photo here though, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fade them a little bit. 
I think that really fits the vibe we're going for here. Next is your shadows. So notice that when you put a line on the curve, the rest of the curve moves with it. You want to keep that in mind because you're adjusting more than just your shadows. This is different than a simple, oh, uh, we'll put my shadows down adjustment because it affects everything. It changes everything. Okay, so I don't really want to change anything about how the shadows look originally from right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a point right on this second line and I'm going to drag down right to about where it intersects here. So they'll be neutralized. See? Okay, and then we're going to move into the midtones. With midtones, I usually do like to bring that up a little bit. It makes it a little more punchy, a little more dreamy when you bring it up. When you bring it down, it gets kind of flat, which can look good in some images, but for this one, I want it to really punch. I want it to pop. Um, it enhances the color as well. You can see, especially here, it's going to enhance that color, which is what we want. Okay, so I'm going to have it right about there. I think that looks pretty good. That's pretty good. Now notice I've put that point, and that's also affected my highlights here. So my highlights have gone up, and I, I, I'm mad about that. I ain't mad about that. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit right about there. And my whites, um, if you bring them down, obviously they're going to get more gray all the way down to black. And then if you bring them over here, well, I have other points, so I can't bring it all the way over like I could with the black in the beginning. But it, it makes it more white. So I'm going to leave it at the default, and that'll be it for the tone curve. Next section, we'll go into the basic color theory and the color curves. On this color wheel, the red, green, and blue channels are represented. This is called an additive color wheel. Now, this doesn't mean you only get to use red, green, and blue. You also get to work with the inverse of those colors. The inverse color is determined by mixing the two colors that are not present. So, for example, when using the red curve, the inverse of the red would be a result of mixing the green and blue, which gives you cyan. When using the blue curve, the inverse would be the results of mixing green and red, which gives you yellow. And finally, when using the green curve, the inverse is the result of mixing blue and red, which gives you magenta. Load up your favorite browser and go to color.adobe.com. They have a great color wheel tool that you can use to make color schemes and match the colors that are in your image. So the first thing you need to do is set your base color right here on the left. To determine your base color, go to your image and just take a look, look at the histogram. And for this image, for example, it's the kind of puke green color. I'd like to call it a puke green Chevy. So that's why I think this is important to know and why I put it in the video, because next time you go out to shoot, you'll have this in mind and you can work with images that already have great colors to begin with. Okay, so now that we've got our puke green, our uh, Will Smith Sonic Aladdin blue, and some other kind of shades in between those shades, hop back into your color wheel, and we're going to set the base color, so we do that by clicking on this little indent arrow. And then I'm going to go to the split complementary color scheme and I'm going to drag it over to the puke green color. Beautiful. Now we want to get our Will Smith Aladdin blue. So let's drag that over to what looks about good to us. And Adobe is going to automatically apply the color harmony rule. So everything's going to look nice. And then you can see we've got our, uh, our magenta from the bush over here. So you can just kind of drag that around, see what kind of colors you get. 
And this is great for learning. You can play around with all the different color schemes. I don't really know anything about color schemes. I dropped out of art school in the first semester. So uh, yeah, now that we've dropped some, some knowledge bombs on you, we can get into the color curves. Go to your channel right here and click on red. And we are on the red curve. So the most fundamental thing about color curves is that dragging any point upwards will add that color to that point of tone. Blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. So if I drag my first point up here, I'm going to be adding red to the blacks of the image. So you can see here, as I drag it up, the blacks become red all the way up until they're pure red. Oh, you don't want that. Based on the color palette I chose for this image, I want nothing to do with red. So we can apply what we've learned and actually drag it down and to the right, which is going to add cyan to the image, nicely complementing the colors we had chosen. I'm going to do a very slight cyan adjustment, just enough for it to be noticeable and to add some value to the image. Next up, let's add a point for the shadows. And I'm just going to leave those at the neutral point. I don't want to add any color to them. Now let's add a point for the midtones. Uh, for these midtones, I'm going to bring it up ever so slightly, barely enough to be noticeable. And moving on to the highlights, I'm going to add a point and leave that at the neutral area. And finally for the whites, I'm just going to leave those neutral as well. Don't want any color there. Want that to contrast nicely with everything else. Now you can go into your channels in the bottom and click on the green channel. So hopefully you remember from the additive color wheel that bringing it up will add green to the blacks and bringing it down and to the right will add magenta to the blacks. So for this, I'm going to bring it down and to the right ever so slightly, adding the smallest amount of green, just barely enough to be noticeable. And let's add a point for those shadows. Going to bring those down a little bit. Right there is perfect. Let's move on to the midtones. I'm just going to bring the midtones back to the neutral level. For the highlights, I might, I might put some spice on it. I might put a little magenta in there. I might put a little green. And that's the great thing about this. There really aren't any rules. You can kind of just do whatever you want. Rules are made to be broken. And I'm pretty happy with that. Let's move into the final curve and tie this all up with the blue curve. Now, blue is my favorite curve because... I'm blue. Uh, actually, it's because it's my favorite color. I just really like it. So for this, I'm going to bring it down and to the right just a little bit, adding a little yellow. It's the yellow! Yep, that looks pretty good to me right there. going to put my shadows around the neutral point, not adding too much. Again, just barely enough. Now for the midtones, I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow into those as well. Again, don't want too much. I'm usually very slight with the adjustments that I make. If you overdo it, it just becomes not believable. Now for the highlights, I'm going to just set those back to the neutral. Again, I like to have the contrast in the highlights and the whites, so I usually just leave them at the neutral point. And that concludes the tutorial. Really hope you enjoyed it. Hope this added some value. And leave a comment on what you'd like to see next. I'll probably do a video about developing and scanning film.